Honestly, I couldn't decide just one comment for floors 6.5 through 7 of Citadel of the Infinite Abyss to be. There are just a lot of great ideas, and I've chosen six of them for this video that I think will all work well together. If you have any floor ideas of your own, please leave them in the comments. Wow, would you believe it? I'm actually remembering to say the obby idea at the start of the video. There it is. Wow, unbelievable. I've already built a little bit of the floor. There's this little, like, outside section before it, and so I guess it starts, like, outside, but... Yeah, move your camera around the outline cube to see where the cancline false parts of the wall are. So these two sections here are 0 0.02 transparency, which is the minimum for a glass semi-transparent part like this to work. You can see it makes the 0 0.021 go away, but not the 0 0.01. So that's why it's got to be that. And it's semi-transparent because it's 0.99 transparency. Anyway, this comes from the first of the six commons. So, it's a floor using glass mechanics, but I don't know if they happen in Abbey Creator. They do. For example, a button that activates glass for a few seconds to let you see what parts are real. And a glass push box you can push around to see what is real or fake, like in that Tower of Feeling Lazy section. I've never played that tower, so I don't really know what they're talking about there, but I can imagine it. But yeah, basically just using the properties of glass, which is that it'll make things... 0 0.02 transparency or higher completely transparent. I don't really know why it does that, but hey, it's kind of useful for making creative sections. There are basically going to be two paths on this floor. So the first one is this one. This is path one of the floor. You'll return to this several times to move the push box along. You'll have to complete several tasks from path two to do so. Be extra careful not to let the push box fall because there's no way to respawn it and you will be soft locked. Oh, and falling here just sends you back to here, by the way. You can start path two with like some jumps like this. I guess. This is path two of the floor. You'll complete several sections throughout it to help move the push box from path two along. Falling will send you back to the start of the floor. Pretty much just says the same thing. Well, except it says the push box is on path two, which is inaccurate. Now it's correct. Now, since the way I'm envisioning this is that you're going to be like going back and forth between the two paths a lot, I think it would make sense that it's like multiple paths off of path two, if that makes sense. And so in general, the parkour from path two is going to be like towards the top half of these two floors, or floor and a half, I guess, and the push box path is going to be just down here. Oh, and the push block thing, by the way, came from this comment. How about a floor where you have to do with one push block? If you lose the block, then you have to restart the entire floor. However, there will be some sections with gameplay. All right, and the third comment we're going to be taking inspiration from in this video is make a floor including various custom objects you can possibly make, like one-way platforms in Tower of Yore in Zone 7, I've never played that, glass spinners and moving parts, shadow parts, and more. This could definitely be the most creative floor in the Citadel, even a conveyor that changes direction using a button Beat block conveyors, kill brick conveyor. Yeah, basically just a lot of, like, combinations of different client objects is kind of what they're saying. So let's see, I can make an ice kill brick. That would be cool. Get it. If I turn off invincible lot editing, you can see I'm taking damage and also sliding on it. I think we're gonna not leave these ice kill bricks, like, marked. Or it doesn't, like, say that anywhere. You'll just have to figure it out yourself. But remember, if you fall on path two, it's okay, but if the push box, or path one, but if the push box falls on path one, then you get soft locked because you can't respawn it. Another comment was floor idea. Make a floor with a lot of trusses and wraps with some rotation, but on some jumps you have to touch a fading part and then go back. Then you have to wait for it to do the next jump. I hope you understand what I mean. What I think they're saying is that, uh, well, let me just show you. So, like, this is a fading part that's blocking you from going here, but, like, you could hit the fading part to make it disappear. Wait a second, or five seconds. If we leave a gap in the truss right here, then you have to actually ladder flick to hit the fading part. So, the way we can do this is that we'll have... Like, you'll do a section in path 2, and then you'll go back to a section in path 1, which is of course going to be a push box section in some way. So, for example, you can press that button, and then it would activate a path over here for you to push the push box across. Then you get the push box to another button, which activates something else over here on path 2. Okay, so the next idea from a comment is a wall hop maze. I think they were kind of joking about that, but we're going to do that anyway. Sort of. Not just like a maze where you have to wall hop the whole time through. That would be impossible. It'll be a mix of wall hops and ladder flicks and like normal platforms and stuff. So it's not going to be that bad. So we can put the maze in this little section in the corner of the floor here. And honestly, it may not even really be a maze. It'll probably just be like one path. Especially because it's like kind of a small section. you just be able to like put your view underneath here to find the correct route anyway. Okay, so here can be the path of this. And then I'll add more of these wedge things like I did here to make it look a little bit better. You know this section from Tower of Mechanically Induced Mayhem? We're gonna kind of be doing that here, but instead of getting a code, you're gonna be getting the positioning of platforms. We're gonna make it so that there's a spinning glass platform, as this comment says from earlier, and it tells you where the platforms are over here. This needs to be Can't Collide False, though. So, uh, first, let's decide where the platforms go. 
So we can do like one there, maybe one there, maybe one there. Now this space is the same as this space in like size. And if I just line this up correctly, there's a like two by two space here. So if I temporarily place that and give it the stud texture so I can see what I'm doing, clone this and place it there. There we go. I can delete that now. So what if we make these have the normal color, but reflectance 0.2. Now in theory, if I make this 0.2 transparency, by that I mean 0 0.02, if you look through the glass, you should be able to see it. Yeah, I do want to change the size of this though. All right, floors 6.5 through 7 of Citadel of the Infinite Abyss are now done. Here's the app idea if you want to come play this. So when you finish the previous outside section right before this floor, you have to do this head hitter thing off of like the lowest part of there. So it's the most consistent, I guess. Move your camera around the outline cube to see where the can collide false parts of the wall are. So you can see there are two. This is path one of the floor. You'll return to this several times to move the push box along. You'll have to complete several tasks from path two to do so. If the push box falls or touches red bricks, it will be respawned. Nope, just kidding. Not respawn and you'll get soft locked. Player says, not respawn and you'll get soft locked. Shark says, welp, it looks like question mark, question mark, question mark is here. The player, if you fall, that's fine. You just get teleported out here. But if the push box falls, then it like gets teleported like over there somewhere somewhere where you can't get it back and then you get soft locked because you can't do anything this is path two of the floor you'll complete several sections throughout it to help move the push box from path one along falling will send you back to the start of the floor i can't guarantee which one the player is going to go through first like which entrance but i guess it doesn't really matter since you're going to go to both inevitably but the first thing you're actually supposed to do if you're not going to read all the signs first is go this way across the ice kill bricks and then you do this thing so you need to do that so that this will start fading away. And once it's gone, you can trust flick across. And there's another trust flick on there. You kind of have to go into climbing animation. This is outlined in red because it's a timed part. It goes away for, I think I set it to one second every five seconds. Okay, there's that button pressed. So you can actually just jump straight down here. You don't actually have to go back like outside here. So that activates this bridge. Okay, so these red bricks, they aren't like respawn parts like you would normally make. A section like this be they are instead teleporters like the one on the floor here for the push box so the player can press this and it's fine anyway once you press the pressure plate that should activate all the gray platforms along here and here you got another jump like that where you gotta get the fading part to disappear and then you go on here from here it might be possible to make that jump it's probably not but what you're supposed to do is that anyway you gotta press this button here button is required to get through here i already deactivated it but I'll show you when it reactivates what it actually is. It's like a bunch of wood, like, blocking this off. And there's also an invisible part here, so you can't, like, go into climbing animation and, like, somehow get past it anyway. When you jump to this ledge, the ice kill brick will deactivate for three seconds. Repeatedly wall hop until it reappears and you can jump back to it. Then make your way to the button. If you fail this, like that, uh, you still hit one of those two buttons, the one that activates these purple studs. And so if you were to fail that, you'd just make your way back this way and do this again. Okay, there's a button, so after that you can just jump back down. And then that activated this platform here. This sign says, try clicking these fading parts. You can wrap around here, of course, but you're trying to get the push box through here. And yeah, probably do it backwards so you don't go into climbing animation on the push box, which would be annoying. Now that you have pressed that gray button with the push box, you can go back this way, and you have to do these trust jumps, which are of course now activated. Here you need to look through the spinning glass part to see where the platforms are ahead of there, and that's what that sign explains. So there's one approximately here, there's one approximately here, and one approximately here. But you can kind of just ignore that one. You need to stay on the left side to get to here anyway, so probably just use the two that are here. The button on the left activates the final platform needed for the push box for one minute. The button on the right resets the button if you wish to reset the timer. You can do that to activate that for 60 seconds, and then if you want to restart the timer, you can do that. So 60 seconds is way longer than you need. Um, I was thinking you'd like go around the whole thing through here, but I didn't realize you could like just jump straight down. I guess we'll leave it at 60 seconds though, because it is like a soft lock. So it presses a button when it falls down there, and so it'll deactivate a half stud wall here, and also an invisible one stud wall. The reason for the invisible thing is so that you can't just dance clip. That's going to be the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Here's the Abbey ID one more time. If you enjoyed, please remember to leave a like and consider subscribing so you don't miss any future videos. I'll see you in the next video, and have a great day.